Today's very latest news coming to you first from the fabulous Patia Media Group here in Patia. And if you could like and subscribe, that would be amazing. Thank you. Police at Phuket Airport were called by security after a 50-year-old Australian tourist jumped from a parking building this week. At around 8.30, security records showed that the guard called to the man not to jump, but he did so anyway. CCTV shows him clearly arriving alone and taking the lift to the top floor, ripping up some cash money for some reason and then making his exit. A full autopsy is underway as families are notified by his embassy. As a result of an incident at a rally last year when COVID regulations were still in effect, when COVID regulations were still in effect by anti-government protesters, four have been handed jail sentences this week, up to three years by a court in the capital. Found guilty of setting fire to two police vehicles, refusing to stop protesting and going against a legal ban on protests at the time, all four denied the charges and planned to appeal. In Sakao, police waited on the arrival of a 19-year-old female who regularly crosses from Cambodia, where she works in a scam call centre. Arresting her, as records show, that hers was one of the bank accounts used to receive monies from the wife of a man who later took the lives of his children along with the wife after they were scammed online to such an extent that they faced seeing their home repossessed. Five others have warrants waiting for them, once found, and it's indicated that she will be willing to spill the beans on the whole team in order to reduce her own inevitable sentence. A 50-year jail sentence has been handed down to an accountant in Patani's legal department after she was found guilty of embezzling close to 3 million baht of government funds. The female, a level 4 civil servant, stole money on 18 occasions by faking her superior's signature for approval. Those funds then went directly to her own account, despite pleading not guilty, which didn't do her any favours when she got sentenced. She's already repaid approximately 20% of the funds stolen. The poor Thai party leader, not to be confused with the new Prime Minister, has confirmed his resignation from that position, whilst remaining as an MP and a possible candidate for ministerial office. Kun Chol Nan is believed to have quit after leading the election campaign, which got them into second place, and which promised that the party would never work with or form a coalition with any parties or individuals involved in the coup or subsequent governments. With that promise already broken, many supporters are said to be shaken. 30 locations in the capital and surrounding provinces were raided yesterday by anti-money laundering teams who seized over 1 billion baht's worth of assets believed to belong to a Chinese organised romance scam operation which tricked gullible ties into believing that they'd met the loves of their lives virtually online. With many sending over a million baht to their non-existent lovers, most, it's believed, were too embarrassed to report their losses. But enough did to lead the police team toward arrests. The scammers are said to have also owned and operated their own lawyer's office through Thai nominee shareholders and used that to purchase multiple homes and businesses. Thai charity workers on the border with Myanmar are reporting a high increase in Burmese refugee arrivals following a block by the government there on supply of essential foodstuffs to some 50 camps used by displaced persons there as a result of the internal infighting in the army-ruled country. The ban, yet another attempt to make life harder for rebels, has had more effect on refugees than others, as rebel military are said to be well stocked up. But the ban has resulted in massive price hikes for staples such as rice, which has almost doubled. Meanwhile at home, and 30 local police raided a pool villa in Santa Heap, rented out as a party house and hosting some 50-plus teenagers who were, according to reports, gambling, drinking and taking illegal drugs. A search revealed at least seven guns found in vehicles parked there, and all are reminded that it's illegal under the Hotel Act of Thailand to rent property on a daily basis without an hotel licence. The property owner was also being sought for questioning. A 37-year-old Korean is believed to have taken his own life here in the city in a condo, discovered by his 27-year-old girlfriend. He'd hung himself. Police found no sign of any struggle in the room, and the female told police that she knew of no reason for him to take his own life. Patia's deputy mayor has told the press that he's confident that the nightmare roadworks on Beach and Second Road, at least, will be completed ahead of the upcoming high season. In a visit to both, he told the press that contractors have been urged to put it into higher gear, which will please locals for sure 
As until now, many believe that they've all been speeding along, but in neutral. Finish date? Well, the goal is October. And Kaosod News reports on a China woman who celebrated a Chinese festival this week here in Thailand by lighting candles and sticks in respect to her car. Only issue was that the car caught fire. It seems that she tied the burning candles to the number plate of the vehicle before going indoors to continue celebrations with family. No word on whether her insurance will consider a claim. And with the Met Office promising highs today of 31 degrees, dropping down to 27, a thick cover of cloud with thunderstorms in spots, but the real feel of 38 degrees. Local and national news today from Fabulous 103 FM and Fabulous Patia Media Group. And to get a notification every time we release another bulletin or programme, like and subscribe to our channel, Fabulous Patia Media Group, by using the link below.